I will start with uh, a little uh, uh, personal admission between um, us 300 people or whatever it is. Um, I've actually not been on stage with a guitar since I was about 20. If you're doing the math, that's about 22 years ago. And the prospect of picking it up and, and, and playing it publicly uh, absolutely freaks me out, okay? What do you think? Should I, should I pick it up? Yeah. Well, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll spare myself the awful public humiliation, and I'll spare you the, the, you know, the embarrassment that you'll feel by me just screwing up. Um, so I'll just leave the guitar there. I think it's, it's better um, for it and me for, for that to sit right there. I wasn't that good, I'll tell you that story in a second. Um, but uh, the guitar is here because it illustrates my story and how the relationship that I've had with the guitar since I was about 12 years old, how it changed my life, even though I haven't played a single note with it in a long, long time since I, since I serenaded my, my wife before I got married. So that's only the last time that I picked it up, then that was like 12 years ago. And I sucked, but my wife still married me anyway. Um, so I first picked up the guitar uh, when I was 12 years old, I grew up in Cyprus, and I saw this awesome movie called Back to the Future. Has anybody here seen it? Okay. So you may remember the scene. It's Michael J. Fox. It's the first scene of the movie. He picks up this cool, uh, a square, a yellow, mustardy yellow guitar, plugs it into an amplifier, turns the amplifier all the way up to 10. What does he do next? He proceeds to play a chord and blows the amp up, blows the guitar up. And that's when I thought... That's what I want to do. <laughs> That's what I want to be. I want to move to America and become a guitar player. So, you know, I got obsessed like every other teenage boy with a guitar, okay? Uh, nothing sexual here. I, I, I played over and over and over again with my guitar. Um, six, seven, eight hours a day, practice every, every music that I could find and, and get at that time. And I, I, my dream came true. I got accepted to perform and go to Berklee College of Music in Boston. And I move all the way to Boston. This is pre-internet, so I was pretty disconnected. I was a young 19-year-old boy, barely spoke English. Makes a good story. Um, I, so I moved to Boston, and um, I realize I really suck. I suck at this. I am the worst guitar player ever. And if you've gone to Berkeley, you've probably experienced the same feeling. There's over a thousand people that are better than me. So you know what? I got so discouraged. I quit playing the guitar and ended up studying music business, okay? Which at the time was a bit of a startup. It was a new thing. So um, uh, I did music business. I, I ended up spending the next 20 years of my career on the business side of music. Really nothing, uh, and nothing to do with actually performing. Um, first, I became a talent agent, booking famous artists like Pat Metheny and Chick Corea. And then as an entrepreneur, I, I started an online company that became successful, and I spent about 13 years running it. But I realized, looking back, that um, for those 20 years or so that I hadn't played the guitar, I kind of run away from the fact that I was a guitarist. I, 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 I almost refused to accept that I was a musician, and in some ways I was almost a bit embarrassed you know, about it. I felt, ah, you know, I don't have a big degree from a big prestigious uh, you know, business school, and I thought that somehow maybe being a musician kind of lessened me, kind of made me smaller, weaker, maybe not as good a negotiator. And it wasn't up until after I sold um, my company uh, about a year and a half ago, and I went to Berkeley to start a new entrepreneurship institute, and I got into the whole entrepreneurial education thing that I realized I, I didn't become successful in spite of the fact that I played the guitar. I actually became successful precisely because of the fact that I played a musical instrument, which is a bit peculiar, but I'll, I'll tell you how. First, for those of you who play instruments, you'll know that it's impossible to learn how to play an instrument without learning how to listen. You know, you just simply cannot perform music unless you become a good listener. You have to observe the environment around you. You have to take feedback. And how do you learn something? You listen to other people play it. You emulate it. You rewind the tape. You, you know, you try again and again and again until you get it right. And you start parroting somebody else until you develop your own voice. It's the same thing with business. Unless you listen to your customers, unless you interact with them, unless you listen to your customers, to, to your employees and other people, and you get the feedback and you react with it, you just, you're not going to become good at it. When it comes to collaboration, you know, music really sucks when you perform it on your own. Um, I'm not going to make another sexual joke here. Um, but it kind of sucks, you know. You need other people in order to have fun playing music. Either it's the audience that you're playing with, or it's people on stage. 
Um, and it takes a lot of people to make cool music. And it's the same thing with, with running a business, being an entrepreneur. It takes a lot of people to make a cool company. And you have to get all these different people to have the same vision and come together, no matter where they are, no matter what discipline they have, and somehow sound as one. Okay? So collaboration is, is paramount. And I wouldn't have been able to understand that if I wasn't a musician. The second most important thing that guitar taught me is how to be and think improvisationally, how to think quick on my feet. When you go to Berkeley, they drill it in you that it's not enough to just play other people's music. You have to develop your own voice and you have to improvise and come up with something on the spot within certain parameters. Uh, business and entrepreneurship is a bit of the same thing. You know, you have to be nimble, think quick on your feet, react to things that are coming your way, unless, and if you don't do so, you just kind of miss out on opportunities. And it's a bit of like the old joke that us musicians have, um, you know, when you're, when you're improvising and you hit a wrong note, anybody knows what you do? No, no, you hit the same wrong note over and over and over and over again until what? People begin to think that you're a genius. And it's the same thing with music, with, with, with business, right? But I would say the most invaluable gift that my guitar um, gave me, and by the way, this is not my guitar, but it's okay. Let's, let's all pretend that it is. The most invaluable thing that, uh, that it gave me is getting comfortable with the concept of failure. If you practice an instrument, and the first time you pick up a music instrument, I still remember the first time that I brought my brand new guitar at home, and I was touching it and feeling it and getting so excited about it, but you actually really don't sound that good. And you understand that failure is part of the process, it's part of the learning process. Even seasoned musicians, the first time that they get a musical score, what do they do? They understand that failure is part of the process. But what do we do with entrepreneurs? We expect that somehow we're going to be perfect the first time out of the box. It's, it's really not that way. It takes a long time to become good, and you have to get comfortable with rejection, with failure. So, you know, it's funny. Here we are, 2014, and everybody talks a lot about, um, you know, this entrepreneurial mindset and developing the startup mindset for young college graduates, um, which is important. But how do, how do we do that? What do we teach people? Well, we talk a bit too much to the left brain, as far as I'm concerned, and not enough to the creative right. We speak to their logic, but not you know, not to their heart. We teach people how to talk, but not how to listen. We teach people how to be individuals, but not how to work with others. We, we teach people how to execute mindlessly on a business plan, but we don't teach them how to think and be nimble and think quickly. And we also get people, we give them this expectation that they're going to be perfect the first time around, which is crazy. That doesn't happen. Whereas we need to get them comfortable with failure. So, you know, for me, we, 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 we talk about, especially in the United States, there's a lot of discussion about how we should make business plan writing mandatory for everybody, regardless of, of what major you are, and financial projections and market analyses and coding. Coding should be mandatory for everybody. And, you know, I don't, I don't disagree with this. I think that in, in, in this day and age, understanding technology, understanding business, regardless of who you are, is absolutely paramount. But I'm saying, if we want to talk about all this stuff being mandatory, Maybe we should talk about music education, which, by the way, is being cut left and right. I want to talk about music education and maybe even musical instrument playing being mandatory. Crazy, but guess what? Without the guitar, I would have never uh, learned, uh, you know, how to collaborate, how to become a good listener. I would have never gotten comfortable with thinking quickly, being nimble, presenting things. And more importantly, I would have never, ever, ever gotten accustomed to what it's like to fail. And guess what? Get back up and start again the next day fresh, which is what it takes. So I want to stand here, even though I haven't played the guitar, and even though this is not really my guitar. But I want to thank my guitar because I may have not become successful by actually playing it, but I have become successful because of it. So thank you, guitar, and thank you very much.